A new hotel had just opened on the island of Sodor. And it was very popular, so popular that it was constantly booked. And the film controller had planned to have a narrow gauge line from the hotel to the railway. And work had already started. One morning, Bertie had to take special visitors to the Cody Bell Railway, and then Duck was going to take them to the Arsdale Railway. At last they came out. They were very excited. Hello, Bertie. You must take us to the Coldy Fail Railway. I know, said Bertie. Are you ready? We sure are. After the Coldy Fail Railway, Duck's going to take us to the Arsdale Railway, and there's a lot of hills and mountains up there, so we're going to have a look around. You know, they say buried high up in the mountains at Arsdale, there lies a part of an ancient railway. Wow, amazing, said the visitors. And then they boarded Bertie, and Bertie set off. After their visit to Coldy Fell, Duck came to take them to Arlesdale. They said thank you to Coldy, and then they set off. Donald and Douglas were in the sheds. Hello there, Duck. What are you going this fine morning? I have to take some special visitors to the Arlesdale Railway. And they're going to search high up in the hills, said Duck proudly. At last they arrived at Arsdale. Hello there, Duck, said Jack. Then Jack took the visitors to the mountains. Have fun, guys, he said. Then the visitors started looking around the mountains. They climbed up hills and went through forests. Then they came across old railway tracks. This must be part of the ancient railway that Bertie told us about. Let's follow the tracks. I don't think anyone's been here in years. And look! There's an old engine shed. I wonder, I wonder what this railway used to be called. It's obviously a narrow gauge railway. I wonder what type of engines used to live here. Hello? Hello? Is someone there? Did you just hear something? It wasn't me. Someone shouted hello. Let's go and look. So the visitors followed the voice. Oh my, they said. They couldn't believe it. There in front of them was an old machine with a face on it. Hello, I haven't saw a human being in a long time. Please, can you help me? Long ago, I used to be a steam engine. But I caused a lot of trouble, and my manager decided to make me useful, and he turned me into an old generator. And I've been lost here for a long time. Can you help me, please? My name's Smudger. The visitors whispered each other. What are we going to do? We can't leave him. Is there nothing we could do? It would be cruel to leave him after us just finding him. Uh, let's see, uh... Tell you what, phone Knapford Station and see if there's anything we can get done. So one of the visitors went and phoned Knapford Station. Right, right, that's great, thanks. He returned quite soon. Good news, I was just talking to Sir Topham Hatt and he said that he can get the little engine rebuilt again. Apparently there's a roadway close to here, so Madge and Butch are going to come to get the little engine brought to the Sodor Steamworks. Smudger was delighted. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It looks like Smudger's coming back. <laughs> At last, Madge and Butch arrived. Right, said Madge's driver. 
Butch, you put him on top of Madge, and Madge will take him to the Steamworks. No problem, said Butch. When Duck and Jock heard about the news, they were shocked. So we're going back to Allsdale again tomorrow to see if we can find anything else, said the visitors. So the next day, they searched deep into the old railway. They followed an old track, which led them to a mine. We best take the points and follow that track. Then, they had a shock. Oh my! Is that... Is that... There in front of them was an old engine. He was very rusty. I don't believe it. Is that a steam engine? It sure is. Is it dead? No steam engines can't die. Then he started to wake up. Oh my look, he's waking up. What are we going to do with him? I don't know if the railway could afford to repair another engine. True, they're going to have to completely rebuild that smudger engine and that will cost a lot of money. If we tell them we find this engine, they might get him sent to the smelters. But we can't just leave him. Very true. What if we don't tell the fat controller? I'm sure all the railway workers would love to help him. They could even hide him. I shall telephone Butch's garage. Poor little engine. I wonder how long he has been lost for. Soon Butch and Marge arrived. They were very surprised. We must try our best to keep him safe, said Marge. I will keep him at the garage for the meantime until we can find out where we can hide him, said Butch. It's totally amazing. You would not believe that we have found two engines on this old railway. Very true, said Butch's driver. At last, with everyone's help, they got the little engine on the back of Madge. Sir, thank, sir, thank you, said the little engine. The visitors thanked Madge and Butch's drivers. Don't worry, one thing I like doing is helping little engines. Tell you what, me and Madge will give you all a lift to save you from going down this mountain again. Thank you, said the visitors. You are very kind. Right, let's get going. You know, that engine looks like one of those mine engines they used to use years ago. And then they all set off. At the station, Edward, Duck and Thomas were talking about the little engine. What are we going to do? said Duck. Just say we showed him to the fat controller. The fat controller might be afford to get him fixed and might scrap him. Maybe we could hide him somewhere, said Edward. But where? said Duck. It's too risky hiding him here, but there's another railway where we can hide him. The Scar Lowey Railway. Thomas was delighted. You're a genius, Edward. That's a fantastic idea. But there's one problem. The Scar Lowey engines are honest, and they might not want to lie to the thin controller. Especially Scar Lowey and Reneus. Our drivers all know, and so do all the workmen, and they're not telling the fat controller. You're very clever, Duck. I will go to Croven's gate at once, said Thomas happily. Oh boy, Duke is gonna be very pleased, said Edward. If the engines agree, I will bring him to the wharf tonight. Later that day, Thomas went to Croven's gate. 
Him and his driver waited for an engine to arrive. Just then, Rusty arrived. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Is everything okay? Thomas told Rusty about the little engine. It's too risky hiding him on our railway. But the Scarlowy Railway runs through hills and mountains, and there's surely a place where you could hide him. Please, Rusty, can you help us? There's a problem, Thomas. What about our drivers? Everyone on Sodor knows Rusty, except for the fat controller and the thin controller. I don't know. I don't want to lie to the thin controller or the other engines. I know, Rusty. But it's better hiding them and keeping them alive than getting them scrapped and sent to the smelters. I don't know, Thomas. Then Rusty smiled. Tell you what, Thomas. Tell Edward to bring him to the wharf tonight. Really? Of course. Don't worry, Thomas. We'll look after him. And then Rusty set off. When he returned to the sheds, all the engines were there. The thin controller had an important announcement. I wonder what's going on, said Scarloway. Just then, Duncan arrived. I said, hey, I wonder what's going on. Calling us at a shed in the middle of the afternoon. As soon as Freddy arrives, I will explain everything. Just then, Freddy arrived with a big long coach. The coach was old, and it needed a lot of work done to it. The engines were amazed. Now, as you all know, a hotel has opened close to the railway, and I plan to have a line that runs from the hotel to the Crovens Gate. Work on the line from the hotel to the railway has already started, and this is going to be the coach that the engine will be using as soon as it is repaired," said the thin controller. Which one of us is going to be taking the passengers from the hotel to Crovens Gate? asked Sir Handel. That will be a surprise. Now, Scarlowy, tomorrow you must take the coach on a run around the railway. Then it will be taken to the works to get done up a bit, just in time for the route from the hotel to Crovens Gate to open, said the thin controller. I don't think this hotel's a great idea at all. Said Duncan. Nonsense, Duncan. The new hotel will be a great addition to our railway," said the thin controller proudly. Now, Scarlowy, tomorrow you must go as smoothly as you can with the coach, because it has not had a proper run in a long time. No problem, sir," said Scarlowy. Great," said Rusty to himself. "That's more money spent." Late that night, when all the engines were sleeping, Rusty's driver arrived. Rusty, are you ready? Yes, and driver, are you sure you want to do this? Of course, I'm an engine driver because I love engines, always have, and I do not want to see one come to any harm. You know, I can't believe a mid-sodor engine has been found. Then he set off. But Rusty didn't know that Duncan was only dozing. What it was that? Bread soda? Where's Rusty went to at this time of night? Hmm. Then Rusty arrived at the wharf. Don't worry, little engine. Do you know where you're going to hide him? Said Edward. Of course. I'm going to take him to the old quarry. No one ever goes there now. Thank you. Said the little engine. No problem," said Rusty. "Now let's get going." And they set off. Then Rusty took him to the old quarry. There you are, little engine. You'll be safe here. Excuse me, but what exactly are you?" he said. "What do you mean?" said Rusty. It's just that no steam comes out of you, and you also have a funny smell, and there's no rods on your wheels. Oh, 
I'm what's known as a diesel engine. I use oil instead of coal. We are new. They don't make steam engines anymore. Use an oil instead of coal is a very good idea. You're the first steam engine that has ever said that. My name is Rusty, by the way. So am I, said the little engine. What? Your name is Rusty as well. Oh no, I meant I am Rusty. I don't have a name. I never have. I was just a mine engine, so they decided not to give me a name. That's terrible, said Rusty. My friends had names. Do you remember an engine called Juke? You know Juke? He was the best engine in the world. Juke works on our railway now, said Rusty. I miss Midsodor. I miss all the engines, except for one. An engine called Smudger. Never heard of him before, said Rusty. You're lucky then, said the main engine. You'll be pleased to know that there's no Smudger on this railway. The little engine smiled. If you don't mind me asking, but what happened to you? How were you lost all them years? Would you like me to tell you? said the little main engine. Of course, said Rusty. Well, it all happened a hundred and ten years ago. Rusty, this was my life. I worked on the Mid Sodor Railway, and I was a mine engine, and I went deep down in the mines to get coal. The Mid-Sodor Railway was kind of a happy place. There were many engines. And there was Duke, the oldest engine of all. He was named after his grace the Duke of Sodor, and he was one of the most nicest and best engines in the world. And he always looked out for me, and we were very good friends. And there was Smudger, one of the nastiest rude and rough engines you could ever meet. He thought I was really useless and he used to make fun of me because I didn't have a name. You know something, mine engine? When the mid Sodor railway closed down, two of its engines were bought by this railway. Really? Tell me their names. I might know them. I don't think you knew them, mine engine. They're now called Sir Handel and Peter Sam, but they had different names when they were mid Sodor, but I just can't remember what their names were. Are you sure one wasn't called Smudger? Oh no, certainly not. They told me their names a long time ago, but I definitely don't remember them saying Smudger. Now let's get back to the rest of the story. There was a mine. It was the biggest mine on Sodor. It served the Scarlowy Railway, the Mid Sodor Railway and the S and M Railway. It was always very busy, but an engine lived there. He was called Bertram. He was very scary looking, but he was very friendly as well. But there was just something about him that I didn't take a shine to. But every time I went to that big mine, I was always friendly to him. And there was Neil. He was one of the S and M railway engines. He used to come to the mine a lot to get coal. I liked him. He was very friendly, and he was a similar ship to me, only bigger. One morning, my driver came to the shed. Mine engine. Today we're going to have to go to the big mine. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, okay. I said. Oh, the poor little mine engine has to go to the big bad mine today, where the old warrior Bertram's waiting for him. Be nice to him, or he might chase you down the mine, and then block it, and you'll be lost down there forever. I'm not scared of Bertram. 
Really? How come I hear you in your sleep at night? I don't like working with Bertram. I don't like working with Bertram. He's scary. Enough," said Jake. "You leave him alone. You're nothing but a rude bully, Smudger." It shouldn't take us that long, mine engine," said my driver. "Come on, Mister No Name. Be a real engine for once in your life and go and do some work." Jake was cross. Then I arrived at the mine. There was a lot of work to do. The S and M railway had ordered a lot of coal, and me and Bertram had to work hard to get the trucks full. Come on, little engine! The sooner we get these trucks full, the sooner the job will be done," said Bertram. <laughs> Now those miners have filled up a load of trucks deep down in the mine, so you must go down first. And bring them up. No, no problem, I said. Then there was trouble, and I mean trouble. Bertram's driver was standing on my track, and he was right behind me, and he was talking to a miner. But my driver wasn't looking, and he released the regulator, and I rushed backwards. No, no! What have you done? Oh no! Everyone rushed quickly. All of Jesus! Blood was everywhere. Bertram's driver was dead. Then the main boss came down. He was in a panic. So was everyone else. Please, I, I didn't mean it. I didn't know Bertram's driver was behind me. We're going to have to call the police. They said to my driver. Please, I'm ever so sorry, Bertram. I was an accident. I didn't know. An accident? Your driver wasn't watching where he was going, and when he released your regulator, you jumped back too fast. And now my driver is under your wheels, torn to bits. You're gonna pay for this. I'm gonna kill you. Oh my! Said Rusty. My driver was sentenced to death for dangerous driving. Annie was hung in the courthouse. Manager was away on important business, so a temporary manager was hired, and he wasn't a very nice person. As you know, mine engine, your driver was sentenced to death by the court, and he was hung yesterday. Now the big question is. What's gonna happen to you? What do you mean? It was an accident. It was not his fault. Yes, well, Bertram did say that you jumped back too fast. Do you know that Bertram's driver's wife and his little children have had the Gwendola workhouse? Their lives will never be the same again. So don't you go around Duke saying that it was not his fault. Listen here, you. I sympathise with Bertram's driver's family, so don't you go around giving me that. All I said was it wasn't the little engine's fault. I know what I will do. I will let families of railway workers decide what happens to them, like wives of engine drivers, brothers and wives of shunters, and it will happen tomorrow morning. But the relatives of railway workers are going to think that he's a reckless engine. You might as well just send him to the scrapyard now. So the next day, relatives of railway workers arrived, and a lot of engines came as well. Yo ho ho! This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. Day day. Hehe. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, this engine. Killed an engine driver at the mine a couple of weeks ago. Now should it be passed on as a fatal accident, or is this engine just a danger on the rails? That's what you must decide. Excuse me, woman. What does your husband do? My husband is a shunter. We'll just say your husband was coupling this engine to a truck, 
and this engine suddenly rushed backwards and done the same thing as he done to Bertram's driver. Or just say an engine driver was walking along the track to his train and got his foot caught between the sleepers. And this engine, with no car, just flattens him. It's happened in many railways before. Oh, yes, all know what to do. Scrap him, and then melt him down. Scrap him, and melt him down. Scrap him, and melt him down. Repeat after me. Yeah, he's got a point. Scrap him, and melt him down. Yeah, scrap him, and melt him down. Well, we don't need a dangerous engine like you on this railway, so scrap him and melt him down. A decision has been made. The next day, a man came to take me to the scrapyard. Come on, little engine. Quickly say your goodbyes. It's time to go. He shouldn't be going anywhere. When manager comes back, he's gonna be furious, said Jake. And then the little main engine sadly left. But for a surprise to him, he found himself in the siding at a hill. Right, that's but quick. I couldn't go through with it. No one has came here for a long time, so you'll be safe here. Oh dear, said Rusty. What an incredible story. But it wasn't your fault. It was. I was too careless. But Bertram's driver shouldn't have been standing on the rails behind you anyway. A hundred and ten years ago, Rusty. It only seems like yesterday. The S&M railway seems bigger now. It's not the S&M railway anymore. It's now the Fat Controllers railway. The big mine that Bertram works at shut down a long time ago, and Bertram remained there ever since. But then a couple of years ago, the mine reopened again, and Bertram works there still. Oh no, just say he finds me, if he knows I'm still alive. But don't worry, little engine, Bertram never comes up to our railway. He always stays at the mines. The only two times he's been at our railway was at Halloween and Christmas. I will see you tomorrow, little engine. That night, Rusty had a dream. He dreamt he was going along the countryside. And then, suddenly, a light started to flicker, and there was a huge gust of wind. A light flickered on and off, and then Rusty couldn't believe it. There in front of him was Proteus. Proteus's lamp flicked on and off. Oh my, Proteus, I found you! Indeed, little engine, you found me and my magic lamp. I grant you one wish. Rusty told him about the little main engine. I don't know what to do. I don't want to tell the other engines in case they tell the thin controller, and the thin controller spend the money like there's no tomorrow. And he's only a mine engine. He mightn't be useful anymore, and if a thin controller or fast controller finds out, they might get him scrapped. I know all about the little mine engine. He was involved in a fatal accident a hundred and ten years ago. He is Sodor's long forgotten secret. Is there no way we can help him and get him repaired? You must not let any harm come to him. You don't want his fake death to become a reality. Lusty! Lusty! Oh, d d Duncan! I was sleeping. I'll say the Lusty! Well, I were you last night. Well, what do you mean? I just saw you leaving the sheds in the middle of the night. You were talking to your driver about mid Sodor. Mid Sodor? Why would Rusty be going out in the middle of the night and talking about mid Sodor? But I'm telling you, last night you was all snorting your heads off, and Rusty was leaving his sheds. <laughs> but Duncan, if my memory corrects me, didn't you see a ghost last Halloween? 
Yes, ma, maybe you were dreaming. I better get the Croven skate. I have to take the new coach on a test run. Good luck, said Renas. The thin controller was waiting the Croven skate. Now, Scar Lowy, I'm relying on you to give this coach a nice and smooth test run because you're one of the most smoothest engines on the railway. Scar Lowy was so pleased his boiler bubbled. You must take the coach to the country station and then take it to the wharf, and then Thomas will take it to the repair yard. No problem, sir," said Scar Lowy. "Good luck, Scar Lowy," said Peter Sam. "Thank you, Peter Sam." And then Scar Lowy set off. <laughs> He was enjoying himself mostly. He happily took the coach around the railway. Scarlowy was approaching a hill, and the coach's couplings were old and weak. As Scarlowy went up the hill, the couplings snapped, and the coach broke free. My," said Peter Sam, "that was the thin controller's new coach." The coach was lost, and later that day, Sir Handel and some workmen went to have a look for it. But the coach was nowhere to be seen. At the country station, passengers had just boarded Duncan's train, but Duncan was thinking about Rusty and what he could be up to, and Duncan's driver couldn't get him to start. There are treasels up to something. He's been acting very strangely. Sure, Will Duncan, you're keeping the passengers waiting. What are you doing? Ah,、oh, the passengers. Ah,、oh, okay, I'm coming," said Duncan crossly. And then Duncan set off. Back at the sheds, Scar Louie was very upset. I'm sorry, sir. I went as smoothly as I could, but the coach just broke free at the hill. I'm sorry, and now it is nowhere to be seen. Where could it have went to? Maybe I bumped it when I was going up the hill, and that's why the coupling broke loose. Don't worry, Scarlowy. It wasn't your fault. It was mine. I should have checked the couplings to make sure they were okay before I decided to get it taken on a test run. It would have happened to any one of us, Scarlowy," said Renas. "I will have another look for it again tomorrow," said Sir Handel. "I will look around the whole railway." Don't worry, Scarlowy. We'll look for it, and we will look very hard. I really don't understand how it went missing," said Sir Handel. Rusty was worried. Oh no! Just say Sir Handel goes to the quarry to look for it. He will find the mine engine. Months passed, and the railway got very busy. And soon the missing coach was soon forgotten. And Rusty kept visiting the little mine engine. And Duncan kept a close eye on Rusty. And one day, the thin controller had called all the engines to the shed. He had a very important announcement. Now, as you all know, the new coach has been missing for a couple of months now, and it was the coach that was going to be used on the route from Croven Skate to the new hotel. But I have some good news. It's regarding the engine that's going to be doing the hotel, the Croven's Gate route. Now I have to say that it's none of you. It is indeed a new engine. The engines were very excited. We haven't had a new engine on the railway for a long time," said Scarlowy. "And engines, he's arriving right now." Just then. Duke gasped. Oh no! Oh no! It can't be! It couldn't be! It's impossible! I cannot! It's you! 
under Kim Smudger. Hello, Juki. Remember me? I think I know him. I saw his face somewhere before. But where? And he knows Juke. He's very, uh, strange looking. He looks, uh, very rough, said Freddy. Sm Smudger, what are you doing here? said Juke. Well, Jukey, you're about to find out what I'm doing here. It's a long story. Now, a couple of months ago, some visitors had a look around the hills at Arlesdale, and then they came across the old mid Sodor Railway, and then they found Smudger. I knew I saw his face somewhere before. That's Smudger, said Sir Handel. Now, when Smudger was found, he was an old generator, and apparently he was turned into one years ago because he misbehaved. But he has promised that he has learned his lesson, and so we are going to give him a chance. Jake was furious. Mr. Percival, let me tell you something. Do not let that engine work on this railway. He is trouble with a big T. Well, Joke, people and engines can change, you know, and maybe Smudger being turned into a generator has made him learn his lesson. Oh, yes, I have learned my lesson all right. It is an honor to be a steam engine again. I am basically a born-again engine, said Smudger. The world seems a lot better now compared to the way it used to be. Apparently back in our day is now called the olden days. Well, Smudger, just so you know, I am going to be watching you. And if there's one ounce of trouble, you will be off this railway quicker than you've got on it, said Duke crossly. Maybe he has changed, said Scarloe. Yeah, Grandpuff, I mean many years of hard work at the quarry changed me, said Sir Handel. Guys, listen to my words. That engine is nothing but trouble, said Duke crossly. Duncan was delighted. So that's what Lusty's been doing all this time. He's been looking after Smudger at the works. And that's what he was talking about mid soda. But the next day, Smudger went back to his old self. Sir Handel and Peter Sam had left some coaches in the carriage shed, and they stopped to have a word with Madge. Just then, Smudger pulled up. Hello, Smudger, said Peter Sam. You know, you two mid solar engines don't know how lucky you are. I mean, if I would have been around when the railway shut down, you would have been shut in the shed with Duke as well. Because they wouldn't have looked at you two twice when they saw me. Sir Handel and Peter Sam were cross. You haven't changed at all, said Sir Handel. I was looking forward to another mid solar engine on this railway too, said Peter Sam. I can't believe that's that helpless little machine that was lost in the mountains, said Madge. See you losers. Sir Handel and Peter Sam were cross. Freddy was collecting passengers at the country station when Smudger came up beside him. Oh my! Are you fearless Freddy of the hills? Or I mean, were you fearless Freddy of the hills? What do you mean? Well, I heard them talking at the works about that incident you had last year, when you busted all your parts trying to go up a hill. And apparently you cost the railway a lot of money. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know, Freddy. The railway only wanted to pay for me to get fixed. Because they think I'm special, said Freddy. What? You special? You should give up and be preserved before it's too late, said Smudger. Freddy was very hurt. Scarlowe and Renes had just got oiled in the sheds 
and they were ready for their next train. Then Smudger arrived. What's this? Resting in the sheds in the middle of the afternoon? This is my first day on this railway, and I'll tell you something now. I'm not one bit impressed. First off, we were not resting in the shed. We were getting our up for our next train. Chick was right about you, said Scarloway. Isn't Dukey always right, said Smudger. Sorry for disturbing your afternoon nap. I will go now, he said. Then Rusty went to tell the little nine engine. Oh no, I don't think I ever want to get repaired now. Then Smudger met Gordon. What are you doing here? Sir Handel's coming up here with the passengers, and you're on the same track. Move now, said Gordon. Excuse me, but who are you? said Smudger. I am Gordon, the fastest engine on Serdor, and I always pull the express. Really? said Smudger. Yes, really, said Gordon. No offence, Gordon, but you look too big and too heavy to be fast. Gordon was furious. Now you must excuse me. We don't want to keep the passengers waiting, do we? Then Smudger met Duncan. Excuse me, Duncan, but can I ask you something? What a did you want? said Duncan. That orange square engine that was at the sheds, what exactly is he? He's smelly, and no steam comes out of him. That it's Rusty. He's a diesel engine. Diesel engine? Never heard of them. Are they new or something? What are you asking me for, anyway? You already know, Dusty. He was helping you when you were getting repaired. And at first, I thought he was up to something. And then you appeared, so he was helping you all this time. Listen, Duncan. I never saw that engine before in my life. Duncan started to think. So do you mean? That... Rusty wasn't helping you at the works. If he wasn't helping you, then that means that he's still. Listen, Yellow Boiler, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you now, I've never saw that engine before. And then Smudger raced away. Sorry if Rusty wasn't helping Smudger, and he was sneaking about and going out in the middle of the night. That must mean... Uh, that the Rusty's still up to something. And then Duncan raced away. That evening, Smudger returned to the sheds. All the engines were very cross. What's wrong with you guys? Why all the grumpy faces? Get out! said Scarlowy. I beg your p- Are you deaf? He said, get out of these sheds! said Duke crossly. Mmm, is are very grumpy today, said Smudger, or is it every day? Who do you think you are, Smudger? How dare you come on to my railway and start causing chaos? This is a nice peaceful railway. Peaceful? You can say that again. Too peaceful. This railway needs to liven up a bit. You're not welcome here, Smudger, so just leave right now. Can't you see, Smudger? No one here wants you, said Reneas. What about my driver? He will have to take me somewhere else. I'm sure we can accommodate your driver, Smudger. Just get out of my sheds right now, said Duke crossly. Scar Lowy was very cross. He was about to say something he was going to regret. You just said to Smudger, get out of my sheds. This is our sheds, Duke. Not yours. You mid solar engines, who do you think you are? I didn't mean it like that, Scarlowy. I was only telling Smudger to get out. Of course you were telling Smudger to get out. After all, you are Duke, hero of all the engines, and none of us match up to your standards. How dare you speak to Duke like that? 
It's not him causing the trouble, it's Smudger, said Peter Sam. Oh, and Peter Sam, I heard you singing the day when you were going up the line. You better stop up because the passengers will start complaining. The passengers love my singing. You're just jealous because you could never sing with your squawky voice. How dare you, said Renaeus. Do you know who you're talking to? Oh, of course, Scar Lowy, of the Scar Lowy Railway. You know I remember when you two first came to Sodor. You were troublemakers, you were arrogant, and you were... We were what, Duke? We were young. We were just built. We didn't know the meanings of the world. What were you, Duke, when you were young? Oh, I forgot, you never were young. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You wouldn't have lasted a minute on Mid-Sodor. That's right, Grandpuff. The Mid-Sodor Railway was full of hard work. Duncan wasn't listening to the argument. He was thinking more about what Rusty could be up to. And Rusty wasn't listening to the argument as well. Meanwhile, the thin controller came to see Freddy. Freddy, the station master's told me that the engines are arguing at the sheds. I need you to take me there right away. Oh my, the engine's arguing. The Scar Lowy engine's arguing. That's a first, said Elizabeth. And Freddy raced off. Then he arrived at the sheds. The engines were still arguing. Then the thin controller came out. Stop this at once! You're causing a disturbance! I want that rotten engine out of these sheds at once, said Duke crossly. Me and Reneus were getting oil up in the sheds, and he told us we were taking an afternoon nap, and he told Sir Handel and Peter Sam that if he was around, they would have been locked up in mid Sodor. And he told Freddy that he should give up and be reserved before it's too late, and he called Mighty Mac a conjoined twin engine. So we all want him out, said Scarlowy. Ah, uh, I see, said the thin controller. Then he paused. Then he spoke to Smudger's driver. You're going to have to take Smudger to the mine. He can sleep at the sheds there, and I will get Bertie the bus to pick you up there. Uh, sure, sure. N no problem, said Smudger's driver. Then Smudger arrived at the mine. Well, well, well. Look who it is. I heard you were back. Found it hard to believe. Said Bertram. Hello, Bertram. Long time no see, said Smudger. You know those silly little engines got me to leave their sheds. You're lucky you're not part of that silly railway, said Smudger. Well, why did they get you to leave? said Bertram. Were you having fun? Because those engines don't tolerate fun whatsoever, said Bertram. You can say that again, Bertram. No sense of humor whatsoever, and they can't even take a joke. You know, if this mine ever shut down, and I was told I'd have to work on the Scarlowy Railway, I would ask to go in to the Sodor Museum. The Sodor Muse what? said Smudger. Museum. It's a place where you put old things. Imagine the Scar and Louis engines in a museum. Yeah, true. Imagine someone coming up to Scar Louis. Scar Louis, can I have a picture with you, please? I'm sorry, but the flash hurts my eyes. Ha <laughs> ha ha. You know, Bertram, I think we're going to get along just fine, said Smudger. Well, as long as you don't get stuck down a mine. We will get along just fine, said Bertram. That night, Duncan had to go to take empty coaches to the Crovens' gate. G guys, said Rusty. What is it? said Scarlowy. There's something I have to tell you. Duncan has kept saying that I've been hiding something, and the truth is, I have. So Rusty told them all about the mine engine. Impossible! Mine engine was killed! I saw him being taken to the smelters, said Duke. But, but, but they didn't take him to the smelters. 
They took him to an old siding near a hill. You mean he's alive? Yes, I have him hid at the old quarry at the minute, said Rusty. Jake could not believe it. He's alive. He's alive. I remember. My driver told me what happened to him. He accidentally ran over an engine driver. And he got blamed for it. And it wasn't his fault. And there was a temporary manager. And he turned everyone against him. Oh, every time I think about that temporary manager, my boiler bubbles, said Jig. What is going to happen now? Well, it's going to cost a lot of money to repair him. And if the thin controller or fat controller finds out, they might decide to get him scrapped. We must keep him safe, said Rusty. Well, we all know now, said Jig so we can all take it in turns to look after him. I honestly cannot believe he's been alive all this time. We'll all keep him safe, said Jig. I would love to tell Duncan, but you know what he's like. He'll be shouting it everywhere, and Smudger, Bertram, or the Thin Controller could find out. Well, what Duncan doesn't know doesn't hurt him, said Jig. And Scarlowe, I've got no joke. I want to say something first. What I said about Mid Sodor and you, I am sorry. I did not mean it. Smudger has just got me in a bad mood. Seeing that our drivers know, there's no reason why you couldn't go to visit them as well. I'm sure you'd love to see all our engines apart from me, said Rusty. I'm sure it's very lonely for him up in that quarry all day. Though it would have been more lonely for him stuck in the hills at mid Sodor. You know, Rusty, it would be an absolute honour to go and visit him, said Sir Handel. Another mid Sodor engine. One that was around before me and Peter Sam ever arrived. And maybe through time we could tell the thin controller and then he might have enough money to get him restored. That would be wonderful, said Rusty. I still can't believe it. Mid Sodor's unnamed mine engine is still alive. The only memory of him is that model of him on the Ray of Audrey's model layout of Mid Sodor, I believe. If only the Ray of Audrey was alive, he would be over the moon about this, said Rusty. The next morning, the engines were still excited. This is brilliant, but we better make sure we don't tell the thin controller. Tell the thin controller what? Then Duncan arrived. Well, uh, what did you not want the thin controller to know? Said Duncan. Oh, uh, uh, I don't want them to know that I'm sick, said Renéas. Sick? Well, it's wrong with ya, said Duncan. Oh, I haven't felt well at all for days, and I don't want the, the thin controller to think that one of his engines isn't up to doing work. Duncan was not convinced at all. Those engines are up to something, and I'm not gonna find out what it is. The next morning, Scarlo and Reneas had to shun some trucks and coaches at the wharf. They were waiting for another engine to help. And just then, Smudger arrived. Hi, guys. What are you doing here? said Renéas crossly. I'm here to help you shunt the trucks and coaches. What is the thin controller thinking of? Well, said the fat controller, maybe all the other engines are busy. And who are you, fatty? <laughs> How dare you! That's the fat controller, Sir Topham Hat. And he's in charge of the Sodor Railways, and he's the one that helped to get you rebuilt, Smudger, said Renéas crossly. Show some respect. Come on, Smudger, said his driver. Let's get to work. Then the engine set off. Here we go. This is gonna be fun, said Scarlowy. 
Scar Louis and Reneas were working very hard. But Smudger was rough with the coaches. Not so hard, said one of the coaches. Hard? I'll show you hard, said Smudger crossly. And Smudger bit the coaches, and then there was trouble. But Smudger didn't know they were coming to the end of a line, and it led to the sea. Scar, Louie and Renes were worried. Stop, Smudger! You're gonna poach the coaches into the sea! Smudger, stop! But it was too late, and the coaches went right off the track. Luckily, only one went into the sea. Scar, Louie and Renes raced over. Look! What have you done? Oh no! You've really done it this time, Smudger, said Renes grossly. Why would you do such a thing? It wasn't my fault. They just dragged me on and on. I think they just wanted a nice dip, said Smudger, sneerly. That's it, said Renes. Driver, take us back to the sheds at once. We're not staying with this engine. Oliver was shocked. I have never saw a narrow gauge engine behave like that before. Scar, Louie and Renes were sulking in the shed. Then the thin controller arrived. They're refusing to leave, sir, said their drivers. Guys, what's going on? I need you to help to clear the mess at the wharf. No, we are not working with that engine again. If you saw the mess he made, sir. I'm sorry, guys, but everyone was busy. Smudger was the only engine available. You know, sir, this is a nice peaceful railway. Engines like Smudger should not be on it. I'm sure there's many other engines left abandoned which would love to work in this railway. And then the engines went back to work. Meanwhile, Duncan had finished his work and he was hunting around the railway looking for clues. And I'm gonna find out what that diesel's up to. Then he went into the countryside. Then he got a shock. Well, it's this. All the ma! All the ma! I don't believe it! said Duncan. He was very excited. Rusty heard Duncan. Well, it's the thing controlled, I gonna say! Oh no! said Rusty. Duncan wouldn't have found. Well, what did he know? I'd have found the missing coach! shouted Duncan. Oh, Duncan! You found the missing coach! Well done! The thin controller will the please. Oh, the driver! What a type of reward am I gonna get for this? Then he brought the coach to Croven's gate. Oh, Duncan! You're amazing! You found the missing coach! As a reward, you can have anything you want. Absolutely anything. That night, Rusty went to see the main engine. Guess what, Lion Engine? I have a surprise for you. Really? What sort of surprise? Here it is now, Mine Engine. Then, Mine Engine gasped. Oh my! Oh my! Shook! Hello, old friend. I never thought I would see you again, said Jake. It's been a long time. Oh my! Jake! It's you! I can't believe it! I've never been so happy, mine engine. When Rusty told me you were still alive, I honestly couldn't believe it. Jake, I have to ask. Mid Sodor, what happened after I went away? After you left, that temporary manager was classed as a hero, and he got a big job in England somewhere. And when manager came back, he was absolutely furious. So we had to buy two new mine engines, Atlas and Alfred. 
and we worked with them for many years. And Smudger caused so much trouble, Manager decided to turn him into a generator, and he remained behind the sheds until he was found. And due to money shortage, Manager had to get rid of all the engines except me, but some years later, Manager bought two new engines, Stuart and Falcon, and I worked with them until the railway closed down, and they were bought by the Scar Louis Railway, and they are now called Sir Handel and Peter Sam. You know, Duke, I was lost for many years, and sometimes I wish I was melted down. Och, don't say that, mine engine. Why would you say such a thing? I was lost as well for many years. I can guarantee you, mine engine, someday you will be restored. But the question is, Rusty, do I deserve to be restored? I killed someone because I was scared of Bertram. It wasn't your fault, mine engine. And besides, unfortunately, many people get killed in all our railways by engines all the time. The next morning, the thin controller had an important job for Reneas. Reneas, I need you and Rusty to take this guards van to the country station. What's inside it is very fragile, and you must go as smoothly as possible. No problem, sir, said Reneas. Duncan had an idea. I said, hey, sir, can I take the guards van with Rusty instead of Reneas? Well, uh, Duncan, uh, I don't know. Well, you did it say, after I found that missing couch, that I could have anything I want. So I want to take this truck with Rusty. He is my best friend, after all, and we haven't saw much of each other lately. Uh, okay, said Reneas. That's okay, Duncan, but you must go as smoothly as possible. Then Duncan switched tracks. Careful, said his driver. Are you ready, Rusty? said Duncan. Right, we're off. And they both set off. Duncan kept talking to Rusty during the whole journey, but Rusty paid no attention to him. At last they arrived at the station. Why did you ignore me through the whole journey? stopped Duncan. That was very lewd, Rusty. I wasn't ignoring you, and I wasn't being rude. I was just being careful. After all, what's inside this truck is very fragile, said Rusty. Now I must go. And Rusty set off. Then Rusty went down the other track. That, that's it. I'm gonna find that once and for all. And then Duncan followed him. Then Rusty went to the main. Hello, my engine. Hello, Rusty. What have you been doing today? Me and Duncan had to take a truck to the country station. During the whole journey, he kept asking me about what I was doing, but I didn't reply to him. I'm sorry, Rusty. I have you lying to your friends. Och, don't worry about that, main engine, said Rusty. Then there was trouble. Duncan sneaked into the quarry. Well, 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 what do we have here? Is that an engine? It sure looks like a stream that it is. So that's what the Dusty's been up to, said Duncan. Come on, Duncan, you weren't supposed to see this, said his driver. Wallet, you didn't know about this, and you didn't tell me. All the other engines know, but I didn't tell Duncan. I couldn't trust him with a secret like this. He'll be shouting it all around the yards. And he keeps asking me, what am I up to? And what am I doing? I know exactly that he thinks I'm up to something, but I just say nothing. Duncan was very cross. He was supposed to be my friend. And he tells it everyone except me. I mean, it's not Duncan's fault. It's just the way he was built. He has such a loud voice. He can be very cheeky and very nosy. But he's still a friend, I suppose, said Rusty. 
Still a friend, I suppose," shouted Duncan. Oh, da da da, da Duncan, what what? Well, 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 what do we have here? Please, it's my fault. Don't blame Rusty. Duncan, please let me explain. You don't understand. I don't understand. And I think I've heard enough of you for one day," shouted Duncan. "Yet I was supposed to be my friend, and yet you told everyone on the island except me. Why? Was it that in case I would tell the Thrin Controller? Well, ah,、uh, Duncan, no, please, Duncan, no," said Rusty. "Yet I put a rusted matchbox in front of our friendship. What、well, the Thrin Controller hears about this?" And then Duncan started by himself. Oh no," said Mine Engine. "Oh no! Don't worry, Mine Engine. I will race after him," said Rusty. And Rusty raced off. But I was supposed to be my friend. Hard in a little scrap engine in the crowdy. Oh, look what will a thin controller ever say? Duncan, stop! Oh no! Said Scarlaway. Duncan has found out about the mine engine. Well, what's going to happen now? He's going to tell the thin controller. Yes, said Scarlaway. Just then, Freddy arrived. Scarlaway told them all about Duncan and the mine engine, and that he was going to tell the thin controller. Don't worry, Scarlaway. I'll see what I can do. Said Freddy. And then Freddy raced off. And then Duncan arrived at the thin controller's house. Mr. Passable, Mr. Passable, shouted Duncan, and he blew his whistle. Mr. Passable, you better come out. Duncan, stop it! said his driver. No, you have done enough. You're as bad as that diesel, said Duncan to his driver. Now, then Rusty arrived, and so did Sir Hamdo. Freddy has told me what has happened. Duncan. Don't do this. You don't understand," said Sir Hamdel. "If Bertram or Smudger find out about this, the little engine could get killed." Duncan, listen, and I'll tell you about the engine. Oh, the ma! So that's why it had to be kept a secret," said Duncan. "And if the thin controller or fat controller finds out, there mightn't be enough money to get him restored." And they might just send them to the smelters. Just what was supposed to happen to him, and that would not be fair," said Sir Handel. And he's only one of them old mine engines, so they wouldn't think twice about getting him sent to the smelters. That's why we've had to keep him a secret all this time," said Sir Handel. "Ora, I did it, nor poor little engine," said Duncan. He was found a day after they found Smudger. If only they would have found him first, he would have got restored, and Smudger would have still have been a generator. Well, it could all do without Smudger," said Duncan. Then there was trouble. The thin controller came out. He was very cross. "What's going on here?" he said. "Why you was all outside my house?" This has went on long enough. And Rusty told them all about the main engine. You say he has no name? Yes, said Rusty. You mean he's Mid Soda's unnamed mine engine, the same unnamed mine engine that's on the rear of Audrey's layout? Yes, it is, said Rusty. Well, I never. This is wonderful, said the thin controller. I've always wanted to see that engine. All that's ever existed of him is that model. There was never even a picture of him, and I believe he was supposed to be melted down a long time ago. Yes, he was. He accidentally killed some Bertram's engine driver, and there was a temporary manager in Mid Soda at the time, and they turned everyone against him, and they all said to get him melted down. But the workers in Mid Soda didn't want that, so they hid him in the hills. You must take me to the quarry tonight, Rusty, and I will tell him that he's gonna go to the Sodor Steamworks to get repaired. The engines were delayed. Does this mean? said Sir Handel. Does this mean that he's gonna get repaired? 
It's Sid Rusty. It sure is Rusty. He's gonna be in working order in no time. Oh, what a splendid day, said the sense controller. Oh, thank you, sir, said Rusty. Duke will be very pleased, said Sir Handel. Guys, here's what I'm at not to tell me. I probably would have been shot in it everywhere, and I'm sorry about what happened earlier. Don't worry about that, Duncan. If it wouldn't have been for you, the thin controller wouldn't have found out, and he wouldn't be getting repaired. So the mass sneaking about. Done a good thing, said Duncan. But sir, there's a problem. What about Bertram and Smudger? They must never find out. Don't worry, Rusty. Smudger's never gonna leave the mines. And neither will Bertram. They will not step foot in this railway again. I will have to tell the fat controller, and the Reverend Audrey's son will have to be told as well. This is great news, said the thin controller. Why not tell everyone? We could make the story worldwide, and we could make sure that Bertram or Smudger never finds out. That is a great idea. I will phone the press at once. That night, Rusty took him to see the main engine. Hello, my name is Mr. Percival, and I am controller of the Scarlowy Railway. And you are the unnamed mine engine, I believe. Yes, yes I am. Pleased to meet you, he said. Now tonight, Rusty is going to take you to the sheds, and tomorrow, you're going to be taken to the works to be mended, said the film controller. Main engine was delighted. That night, Rusty took the main engine to the sheds, and he enjoyed talking to the other engines until he went away to be mended. And at last, the day came when main engine was repaired. Everyone waited the sheds. They were very excited. This is great, said Madge. It sure it is, said Duncan. And then main engine arrived. He was as good as new. He had nice new paintwork and had all new parts. Mine engine, it is an honor to have you on the Scarlowy Railway, said Jake. It sure is said Peter Sam. Another mid Sodor engine on Scarlowy Railway. It is amazing. Thank you, said Main Engine. Thank you so much. And what happened at the Clawley? I'm sorry about it. Oh, don't worry about that, Duncan, said Main Engine. Just think, said Peter Sam. Sodor's long forgotten secret is found. And then everyone started talking to Main Engine, and they all told him it was an honor to have him as a part of the Scarlowy Railway. But there was trouble. Smudger was sitting at the other side of the shed, and he had saw everything. Well, 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 the little lawn named Mine Engine is still alive. Oh, what will Bertram say about this? said Smudger. And up the main, Smudger told Bertram, You're never gonna believe who I saw at the Scarlowy Sheds. Let me guess. Dolgok? Peter Sam? Prince? Princess? David Lloyd George? No, the unnamed mine engine that killed your driver, said Smudger. Impossible! At Curtin Bay, he was killed for what he did. They melted him down. It must have been another mine engine. It was definitely not him. I'm telling you, Bertram, it was him all right. They were saying about how he was lost. And they hit him and pretended that he was melted down, but he wasn't. I guess he faked death. I saw it all with my own eyes said Smudger. How did you go to the Scarlowy Railway anyway? I thought you weren't allowed there anymore, said Bertram. 
Well, my driver likes a couple of drinks after work, so I told him that if he wouldn't take me there, I would report him and say that he was drunk when he was driving me, said Smudger. I heard them saying there was something special going on at the sheds, so I had to have a look. Well, for what he did to my driver, he is gonna pay. He's gonna wish he was never found. Boy, when I see him, he will die. Nine Engine was happily going along the railway, and then he stopped at the thin controller's house. Excuse me, but I have to say, thank you for getting me restored. You didn't have to do that, he said. No problem, Mine Engine. It was my honor. And by the way, how's your new driver getting on? He's my nephew, you know. He's getting on, uh, okay, but he's, let's say, uh, he's strange, right? Very different to all the other engine drivers you have had. He really is. Well, I've never had an engine driver called Willie before, but I suppose he'll turn out just fine. Oh, thank you, mine engine, he said, and then they set off. At the main, Bertram saw Ari and Bert. Hey, you two, said Bertram. Are you addressing us? said Ari. No, I'm talking to Stevenson's rocket. Of course I'm addressing you two. But what could you want with us? said Bert. Do you know that mine engine that was found? You know the one that has no name? Why, of course. Everyone knows about him, Bertram. Didn't you? Don't be so sarcastic. I need you to do a favor for me. Why would we do a favor for you? Said Ari. Because of this plan works out well, that little engine will be dead. And he is a steamy after all. A very old steamy. Well, when you put it that way, of course. What do you want us to do? If you see him anywhere, you'll probably see him at Cruven's Gate. Tell him to come to the mine. Tell him that I've forgiven him. But, have you forgiven him? Said Ari. Why would you want him dead if you've forgiven him? Or, are you only pretending that you've forgiven him? Exactly. When he comes to this mine tomorrow, it'll be the last thing he ever sees. Just like the last thing my driver ever saw. Then Ari and Bert went to Cruven's Gate. Excuse me. You. Hello. Who are you? said Main Engine. I am Ari, and this is my twin Bert. We have something to tell you. Then Main Engine gasped. Oh my! Are you two diesels? Like Rusty? Yeah, yes we are. Well, well, why? I just want to say that yous are amazing. You sir, a great asset to the railway, and you don't use too much coal. And it's a very good idea using oil instead. I salute you, engines, said Main Engine, and you are very helpful as well. Ari and Bert were flattered. Oh my, you don't say! A steamy has never told us that before! But thank you, said Ari. Was... Was there something you wanted to tell me? said Main Engine. Oh no, d- don't worry about it. It was nothing, said Ari. But we must go. Goodbye, little engine. Then Ari and Bert set off and returned to the main. Well, did you see him? said Bertram. We did. We saw him at Cruven's Gate, but we couldn't do it. He was very nice to us. And Steamies have never been as nice to us before as he has. You idiots! You didn't tell him! I'm sorry, but... He was very nice to us. We were very flattered. And you were being very nasty to us. 
So why should we do something for you? Said Bert. Oh, just forget it. What's the old saying? You need to do something, you do it yourself. Later that day, Scar Louie was at the country station collecting passengers. He was very happy. But then there was trouble. Bertram raced past him. Oh my! That's Bertram! What's he doing here? If he goes to the sheds, he will see the mine engine. Oh no, what's gonna happen? Bertram was racing through the Scar Louie Railway and he was heading for the sheds where main engine is and main engine was sitting at the sheds he was racing after his fizz run round the railway and then Bertram arrived at the sheds oh my it's Bertram it's you Bertram well 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 look who it is but Bertram please please what do you want please Bertram no Something that should have happened a hundred and ten years ago. The last time I saw you, you killed m murdered my driver. Please, please, Bertram. I didn't mean it. It was a- Silence! You should be dead. I know I should be. I do not deserve to live. I don't even deserve to be restored again. Well, seeing that you're not dead, it was a long time ago, so there's no reason why we couldn't. Put this behind us. I could forgive you. Main engine was shocked. Oh, please, could you? That would be great. Uh, but there is one thing, unfortunately, that is stopping me from forgiving you. What? What is it? Well, the mine's the problem, of course. Every time I look around it, I am reminded of what you did. Maybe if I saw you in the mine again, I might be able to forgive you, because the last time you were there, you did kill my driver. You mean, you mean you want me to go back to the mine? Why, of course, if you want me to forgive you, tell you what, meet me there tomorrow, and we can put this behind us once and for all. Main Engine had never been as pleased. Oh, thank you, Bertram. Your forgiveness is all I've ever wanted. And tomorrow, we can put this behind us. Fine. I will see you tomorrow. And Bertram hopped away. Back at the main, Bertram told Smudger about his plan. Finally, finally tomorrow, I will get my revenge. <laughs> you sure will, Bertram. You know, he had the cheek, the cheek, to think that i forgiven him. So tomorrow, that little engine will be dead. I'm gonna chase him down the mine, and when he gets to the very bottom of the mine, he will crash, and the mine shafts will start to collapse. And I'm a very fast engine, and I will quickly race out. And he will be buried forever. And with the mine destroyed, I will retire and go into the Sodor Museum. A very good idea, Bertram. Tomorrow I'll keep an eye on the Scar Louis engines and cause trouble for them to keep them distracted. Oh, the sweetness of revenge! Ha 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 ha! That night, Main Engine told the other engines that Bertram was going to forgive him. Finally, after all this time, he's going to forgive me. Sir Handel was worried. Don't trust him, Main Engine. It could be a trap. Exactly. I can see Bertram deciding to forgive you, Mine Engine. Yes, but maybe he's had a change of heart. It was a long time after all. The next day, Mine Engine returned to the mine. He looked around him. 
This place hasn't changed much. Excuse me, m mine engine. If you don't mind me asking, was this the track where, you know, you run over the driver? No, Willie. It was the other track. Just then, Bertram arrived. Ah, you're here. Good timing. Now let's get down to business. Just then, Bertram's driver went to talk to a miner. So, mine engine, bring back memories being here? Uh, yes, it sure does, but being here now, it's not that bad. You know, mine engine, I said yesterday that if you came here, I would forgive you. Yes, you sure did, Bertram, and I am very pleased you're willing to forgive me. See, it was a mistake. You're not here so I can forgive you, mine engine. You're here so I can kill you. What? Uh, what do you mean? Bertram, please, no. It was an accident. Please, Bertram. Did you honestly think that I would forgive you, mine engine? No, I did not. I definitely did not. I was actually surprised when you said to me, Listen here, you. Your driver shouldn't have been so careless, standing behind an engine on the track. It was his own fault, said Willie. How dare you! Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about, you're just a kid! Mines back then were confusing, there was no time to be careful, said Bertram crossly. If this engine wouldn't have been such a card, none of this would have happened, so yes, it was his fault. Stop it, Willie! You're making things worse, said Mine Engine. So, Mine Engine, look around you, because you are going to die. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mine Engine. Meanwhile, Jake was leaving some coaches at the country station when Smudger arrived. Hello, Dookie. How's your little friend the Mine Engine doing? Is he still hiding from Bertram? If you must know, Bertram has decided to forgive him, and he's went to the mine now. Did he say goodbye to you all before he went to the mine? said Smudger. What do you mean? Why would he say goodbye? Sure, he's only going to the mine. Oh dear, I've said too much. No one by saying goodbye because you engines are so well mannered, and you probably say goodbye to each other all the time. Driver. I think mine engine's in trouble. We must go to the mine right away. Okay, said Jake's driver. We must go. Anyway, Smudger, I've not got time to listen to you. I must go. And Jake left. He's gonna go to the mine and ruin Bertram's plans. Right, driver? We're chasing after him. No, Smudger, said his driver. Listen here, you beer-drinking freak. We will race after him, or you'll be going to the job center tomorrow morning. Now come on, let's go! Main Engine was in big trouble. He was very scared. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? said Willie. Willie, please, take me down the mine. We must hide from him. We could hide down there, please. Okay, said Willie. Well done, little engine, well done. Driver! Driver, quick! Driver, quick, you better come and see us! Why, Bertram, whatever is the matter? asked his driver. It's the mine engine. He's only after racing down the mine by himself, and he had no driver. We must race after him. Oh my, right away! said his driver. If he crashes in the mine... Exactly. Though of a big trouble, the whole mine could cave in. I don't know where his driver's got to. Silly little kid, probably scared of the mine. He'll not last as an engine driver. Now let's get going. Right away, said Bertram's driver. Meanwhile, Smudger was chasing Duke along the Skylowee Railway. And Bertram was racing down the mine. But Bertram didn't know that Main Engine's driver had changed the points. But Main Engine was worried. Bertram thinks he's chasing after me! I hope he doesn't run into danger at the bottom of the mine! Well, I would serve him right, said Willie. 
They plan about Bertram's driver. Man Pine looked like they hadn't been changed for a long time. Just so Bertram's heading for danger. Oh, you try to do a good thing. Meanwhile, Duke was heading for trouble. At the causeway, a bit of bush had blown onto the track, and Duke was going too fast. Suddenly he saw it, and he applied his brakes. But it was too late. Oh no! Poor Duke went straight off the track. Oh dear, oh dear, he said. Then Smudger came up. Oh dear, Dookie! Are you okay? And then, Sir Handel and Peter Sam arrived. Oh dear, what have you done to Graham Puff? shouted Peter Sam. What have you done, Smudger? I didn't know the bush was on the track. Smudger, can you go and get a crane and a flatbed to put you on? No problem. Please be okay, Graham Puff. Please be okay. Of course I'll be okay, Peter Sam. There's only bits of bush stuck in my wheels. Mine engine could be in trouble. Mine engine could be in trouble. If you know anything, Smudger, tell us right now. Uh, uh, okay. It was all a trap. Bertram said he forgave mine engine. It was only a lie. So mine engine would go to the mine. And Bertram plans to kill him. I will phone the mine right away, said Jake's driver. Saying you getting derailed, Juki, and knowing it's my fault, it makes me feel quite bad. Meanwhile, Bertram was racing right through the mine. Where is he? He couldn't have just disappeared, and he's not that fast. But there was trouble. Bertram was heading for an old part of the mine that had not been used for a long time, and there was an old coal truck on the same track as him. His driver applied the brakes, but it was too late. Oh! Oh! Oh my! Oh no! The driver! Driver! Are you okay? Oh no! Driver! Oh no! History cannot repeat itself again! Ah, uh, and this time, it's my fault. Willie, we must go and see if Bertram's okay. He could crash or something. Oh, mine engine, he wants you dead, and you're scared in case he crashes? Please, Willie, I don't want anything to happen to him or his driver. Just say his driver gets hurt. Meanwhile, Smudger had brought a flat truck and a crane, and soon Duke was on it, and they coupled Duke's tender to the end of the flat truck. Right guys, we must take Duke to the wharf right away, so Thomas can take him to the steamworks. Thank you guys, said Jake. No need to thank us, Grandpa, as long as you're okay, that's all that matters, said Sir Handel. Meanwhile, main engine was looking for Bertram. Bertram was very upset. I've killed my driver. I should be the one that should the mountain down. Just then, main engine arrived. Oh my, Bertram! And your driver's hurt! Don't worry, Bertram. I will get help right away. <coughs> oh, where am I? Your driver's not dead, Bertram. He's just hurt. I will get help. Right, Willie. Let's get going. And main engine raced to the sheds. Bertram's in trouble, he told the engines. And he told them all what happened. We must get help. Oh my, said the engine. They were very surprised. I just phoned my uncle, said Willie. And he's going to get help. Oh, thank you, Willie. You're going to be a great engine driver. Mine engine, I will come with you, because you will need help, because Bertram's very happy if you're going to pull him. Thank you, Rusty. So Rusty and mine engine race straight down the mine.
Then they find Bertram. Oh my, Bertram! Don't worry, everything will be okay. Oh my, Rusty! Oh, thank goodness to see you! My driver's badly hurt! Thank mine engine, he came to the sheds right away. Meanwhile, the thin controller contacted the hospital, and the hospital contacted Harold the helicopter, and he flew along the countryside looking for the old man. At last he found them. Here, yeah, Willie, look! There's a big white machine in the sky. That's not a big white machine. That's Harold. That's Harold the helicopter. Don't worry, Bertram. We're gonna take your driver straight to hospital. Oh, thank you, Harold. Thank you, said Bertram. Meanwhile, Scar, Louis, Renes, and Duncan were waiting at the main. They were very anxious. And then, Terence, Kelly, and Butch arrived with a crane. Don't worry, Bertram. We're all going to work together and get you put on the track. Everything will be okay, said Butch. Bertram was very relieved. I hope everything's okay, said Reneas. Me too, said Scarlet. And at last, with everyone's help, Bertram was back on the track. Right, Bertram. Time for me to take you straight to the work said Rusty. Meanwhile, the engines were still waiting, and then Rusty came out with Bertram. The engines cheered and cheered. That night, the thin controller spoke severely to Smudger. Smudger, you have caused a lot of trouble on this railway, and you have not been very useful. But you will be useful from now on, because you're going to be put in the Soda Museum, said the thin controller. The museum isn't doing very well, so it needs a steam engine in it. The museum isn't doing very well, said Main Engine. No, sure all the steam engines are still working, said Sir Handel. So, Smudger, as soon as Duke returns, you are going straight into the Sodor Museum. I'm going there as well, said Main Engine. The engines were surprised. The Main Engine, but if you go into the museum... Rusty, listen, my duty was done a hundred and ten years ago, and besides, there's more than enough engines on this railway to do the work that is needed, and after all, I am only a mine engine. And the mine has Bertram. I would do more good in the museum than I would still in service. Mine engine, are you really sure about this? This is a big decision you're about to make. I have made my mind up. I've caused a lot of trouble since I've came to this railway, and I want to say something. I am sorry for what I have done. You are very kind engines. Well, Smudger, I am glad that you have apologized. Because an engine needs to do Duke's work, and the mine needs a mine engine. Now, mine engine, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you. Can you work in the mine until Bertram returns? Uh, I don't know. i tell you what, that will be no problem, said Main Engine. So for the next couple of weeks, Smudger done Duke's work, and Main Engine worked at the mine. And then the big day came for Main Engine and Smudger to go to the museum. All the engines came to see them. We will miss you, Main Engine. I will miss you too. And thank you for letting me be a part of your railway. It is a beautiful place. Will we ever see you again? Never say never, Freddy. The mine engine. You saved my driver. Thank you. And I have to say something. For what happened all those years ago, I forgive you, said Bertram. Thank you. Your forgiveness is all I've ever wanted. I think I'm going to miss this place said Smudger. Then the fat controller, thin controller, and the owner of the museum arrived. 
and they spoke the main engine and smudger, and everyone knew that Sodor's long forgotten secret was finally over. <laughs>